Hey, what's up all you fishing addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. If you're brand new to our channel, be sure to tap that subscribe button. We offer all sorts of fishing how-tos, a lot of fun entertainment where we're fishing all over the world. We've got a lot of professional guides that are helping us out on this channel. So if you love fishing, make sure you tap that subscribe button. Now that we got that out of the way, we're down here with Nick Popoff of Peel The Real Guide Service. And we're talking coho fishing. We're gonna be covering a vast array of topics today. But first up, we're talking bait, and we're gonna do that right now. All right, addicts. So if you guys haven't met Nick, or you guys don't know who oh, Nick is, we got a big old no. Oh, wow, well. We just got bit by one of Nick's herring. If you guys aren't familiar with Nick, this is Nick, Peel the Real Guide Service, one of our addicted guides. Nick, talk about uh, your guide service a little bit. Yeah, so I, I run Peel the Real Guide Service. I operate year round. I do mostly the Oregon coast, Astoria, Buoy 10, the Willamette. I kind of do everything, winter steelhead. I just fish year round, man. Year round, but in particular, we're in Buoy 10 right now, but we'll, we'll drop a link to Nick's website down here below if you guys want to get in contact with him and come out here and do some fishing. But we're gonna talk about bait today in particular, and that was a herring that just got crushed. Yep. So talk about just what are like the, say the main four that people would use kind of down in the, these bigger estuary fisheries or even just in bigger open water style fisheries. Yeah, so typically in the, you know, date back a few years, you know, would, there'd be two things you'd use, anchovies, well I guess three, anchovies, herring, and spinners. And then the fourth, which has come along here recently, would be the Brad's cut plugs. You know, the, the cut plugs, the, the super baits, the, super baits, the originals. Um, I mean, they, they've come out with a, and those are a plastic bait. So those are the four main baits. Um, you know, I, I'm a bait fisherman myself, so yeah. I do a lot of anchovy and herring is what I focus on. But out here, really, it's this time of the year, man, they'll bite pretty much pretty anything much if it's fished properly. So talk a little bit, let's just start with herring. Talk, just yep. kind of talk a little bit about herring. Guys, we're talking in coho particular, kind of is yep. where we're focusing this, because we do have, it's like what, September, it's almost September 1st, so you're yep. gonna have a pretty good coho fishery if you decide to come down to Astoria and fish for these salmon right now. So yeah. talk about herring a little bit in particular, especially with coho, which herring is what we're fishing right now. Yeah, yeah, so I, I like to run herring. There's two different ways you can run them. You can use cut, cut plug herring with, which we use a little jig for, or you can freehand them. I like to cut mine on these. There's two different ways. You know, you can freehand them and just use this beveled edge here, which will eventually look like this. So basically, just puts that angle on the bait, which eventually makes the bait spin and rotate, which I believe we'll have another video coming out on how to rig the baits and things like that, which Exactly, so if you guys, make sure you guys tap that subscribe button because we will have a few videos coming out. We're down here with Nick in the lower estuary fishery filming some videos today. So we have more coming out, not just this one. We're gonna talk about bait, we're gonna talk about rigging bait, we're gonna talk about the entire fishery on how to get down here and catch some of these salmon. Yeah, yeah, so herring, there's two ways to really fish them. You fish them cut plug like I just showed you, or you fish them whole. Um, they're typically fished behind a, a, a short bus flasher, a triangle style flasher. And that's kind of, when we get into the other baits, that's what we'll talk about, like a super series flasher. There's two different types. Um, I tend to focus on the triangle flashers because they keep your bait in line. So I'm trying to keep everything as straight as possible. And and when you're fishing a herring, that's, you know, the triangle flasher is just, it's, a, it's much more effective to me. We get a lot of tide down here, so your tide is affecting a huge portion. You know, when that tide's ripping against a, a big thumping blade, it, your herring doesn't last very long. Yeah, so. it tends to rip off those yeah. hooks. Yeah, absolutely. Rip off those hooks. So in your experience, have you found that a cut plug works better than a hole, or is there scenarios where, where you think that is the yeah, case? Yeah, so I always depend, I always, I, I judge it off of the size of bait we get. So we get fresh bait down here. I don't fish trade bait down here. I actually fish fresh bait that's shipped down from the Puget Sound area. So it all depends on the size. If they're big baits, I typically plug cut them. If they're small baits, I'll fish them whole because you, you plug cut them, they got real thin bellies and they tend to tear out on yeah, you. Yeah. So, um, but two years ago, 
it was whole herring. It didn't matter if they were big, small, for whatever reason the fish teed in on a whole herring. This year, it seems to have been a plug cut year. You know, I've never had to stray away from it. I, you know, I run anchovies every once in a while, but I'm, I'm running, you know, 99% of the time I'm running herring down here. Okay, so talk about anchovies. So when you run it, you're not cut plugging an anchovy, obviously. No, nope, no. Nope. So anchovies, although you can on the bigger ones, if they're fresh, and actually we were doing it yesterday because we jigged up some of our own bait yesterday, and I was plug cutting the anchovy, which is kind of crazy, and it, and it was working really, really well. But you typically rig an anchovy hole. You don't want, um, they, they tend to have a, a lot fuller belly. Show and them so, the anchovy here. Yeah, so you got a couple of them in These there. are little small anchovies. So these are on the smaller side. So these ones I definitely would run whole. You know, the ones I'm talking about plug, plug cutting are, you know, three times this size. And they look like a herring. Yeah, and they look like a herring and they're a lot harder to, you know, keep a bend in. When you have an eight inch body, you're trying to create a small bend in your bait like this. And when you get that big body anchovy, that thing just collapses like this and it's next to impossible to fish. So I typically run these whole. <clears throat> and this is the main food source down here in Astoria. You know, we have, and we were talking about this today, there's birds everywhere. If you look around, they're dive bombing on anchovies. And, and we get massive, massive schools yeah. of these in here. So this is a, the main, I mean, guys like Cameron and, and a lot of the other guides around here, this is what their main source only of bait is. That's fish. the only thing they fish. They won't even put a herring on. So it's all personal preference in the long run. So in no, there is no scenario where it's like, man, I better fish anchovy today or I better fish herring today. No, but I have had scenarios where you start to get, you know, you're getting bid on a herring. Like I'll run four herring rods, two anchovy rods. And there's sometimes, man, certain parts of the tide, those anchovies are gonna get bit. All of a sudden they're just getting crushed. It's hung up. Oh, I got it off. But yeah, there's certain parts of the tides where those anchovies will just get, you know, bit better than herring, and and then you, you switch over and you run all anchovies. You run all anchovies, you know? yeah. You can't be one dimensional out here. That is the main thing. You got to be open to fishing different techniques, different ways, and different baits. Yeah, and we are down in Astoria, so we're kind of talking Astoria specifically. But guys, this these baits and all these things that we're talking about will work anywhere where you fish for coho or chinook salmon. These these techniques and these baits are gonna work for you. So keep that in mind if you're in other areas of the country where you're out here targeting Chinook or coho yeah. salmon. Yep. So now at what point do you go to spinners? So, you know, I used to do it a lot. I used to be water temperature, you know, the warmer the water, I'd run more spinners. But honestly, I haven't this year. It's been, the water temperature's been great. We've had good bites all along on bait. Usually the bait will start to kind of phase out. Yeah. And, and a lot of guys will switch from bait to, to spinners and things like that for coho because they don't want to spend the money on the bait every yeah. day, you know? So it's a little more cost effective. But the way I see it is, $5 spinner that's getting crushed and bent up every time. So it's what's the difference between a few spinners and a few bags of bait, you know? Exactly. So I'll fish bait until I can no longer fish it, you know? But it, I get my butt kicked sometimes by the spinner guys, man. You watch them out here, they just, you know, it's an awesome, effective way to fish. It's great for beginners, you know, it's, it's super, you can't mess it up. And that's you know? one of the reasons I, I'll fish a lot of spinners down here, usually, cause you know, you usually got four to five, six rods out sometimes. Yeah. So I always like to have a couple spinners just for the pure convenience of yep. it. You're not 100%. having to worry about it in bait. If you get into like a hot bite or something and all the rods are going off, you're not having to worry about rebaiting yeah. those. Yeah. You just put them right back out, boom, and they're fishing. And the best part is, is if you get bit, you know, you, you get a bite on one, you can look at it and go, okay, I don't even have to worry about it. I know that's still fishing. You leave that rod in the rod holder. It's a herring or an anchovy. Which this one we should probably check. Which that probably has no bait on it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's the thing is those things, you know, you, you have to reel them up when there's a really good bite going Every time you reel up it's taking you out of the water and it's taking you away from the fish, you know, so it's And I think so now we can I think that's a good transition point to talk about the fork bait And I think that's where that bait has really excelled in this fishery, oh, especially with coho, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's what happens a lot of times in this coho fishery is it gets freaking fast and furious and yeah. so yeah. by having those super baits i know cam was telling me he was just using the all crow one yeah. and yeah. just putting an anchovy in it so yeah. most of the co were thinking it was an anchovy it was smelling just like an anchovy and if you look at the spin we try to put on these baits it's identical to that you know it it literally we did this out in the ocean a little while or last year and, and when i was out in the halem we put an anchovy out and a, and a brad's original and 
you couldn't tell the difference. By the way they spin, it was just like, you know, it looked like the same thing. So, you, you know, it's all about, once again, you know, your personal preference, how you like to fish. Do you like fishing bait? Do you like fishing, yeah. you know, super series flashers with wraps behind them, you know? If you guys are like, some of you guys are watching and going, what the hell are they talking about? We'll have a link in the description yeah. below as well that talks about Brad's super baits and 360 flashers and all that. So if you guys want to learn more about that, We'll have a link down below as well so you guys can learn about that. And I'm sure we got a tutorial or two somewhere out there about how to fish them. Exactly. <laughs> well, there you have it, addicts. That's a little rundown of bait down here in this estuary fishery with Nick Popoff. Like I said, we have a bunch more videos coming. We're going to be doing rigging, talking about the whole setup as well as how to get out here and fish it. So if you guys want to learn more, be sure to tap that subscribe button. If you want to get a hold of Nick, like I said, we'll have a link in the description down below. Yep. You can reach him out on his website and get out here and go fishing with him. Do you ever just take people out and kind of show them a little bit more, like yeah. educational style guiding? Dude, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like teaching people. And actually, the guy I had the boat today. You know, he wanted to learn how to where to be and when, and you know that type of stuff. So it's not just about catching fish, guys. You know, book trips to come out here and learn, and I don't hold anything back. So if you want to get out here and just learn and how to do things different or try something different, feel free to call me, man. All about it. Awesome. I know I always say tap that subscribe button, but I also just want to say thank you so much to all you that have already subscribed to our channel. We truly appreciate it. We're making these videos for all you addicts out there that enjoy them. We will see you next time on the next video. See you on the river. See you on the river.